your initial ETFs when you launched them, you intended to manage them the way you managed your, you know, the hedge funds stuff in the past. And then quickly learned that, yeah, with the limitations around it, 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 that doesn't work so well. So you had to make some changes in the way that you kind of approach managing the funds to be able to, A, provide investors with a more um, predictable and understandable way of managing the fund, but also to be able to get good performance. Because some of the things that helped you get good performance in the hedge fund, you know, doesn't actually translate well into the 40 act space. Um, can you talk about the learnings you had in that kind of transition from like, hey, I have this great strategy. I want to do an ETF to, oh, that great strategy can't actually work as well in an ETF because of X, Y, Z. So we have to adjust and make changes so that we can provide uh, the market what it's looking for in terms of like returns and um, expectations. Yeah, it's another good point, Shana. And, you know, I would say over the course of my career, hopefully at Cloud Capital and even at Texas, this, this kind of, you know, preference for continuous learning and to, to kind of take the the experiences we have in the markets over cycles and with specific products. And we want to continue to build on that and um, deliver strategies that that advisors and allocators find most helpful for, for them and their clients. Um, so that's that's ongoing. I, you know, I think that that will continue hopefully throughout my career, but there's a, a, a more acute example of that. And you alluded to it. It's with regard to um, the active ETF, the hedge equity strategy that we manage at Cloud Capital, which I would characterize the early um, period of that strategy, you know, the first couple of years, frankly, um, as being kind of willing and able to take investment approaches with both the long book and the short book, and even moving the net exposure around um, in degrees that might be more suitable in that traditional LP hedge fund structure, right? When you're talking about quarterly uh, liquidity or even quarterly disclosure of performance and, and holdings with a lag. Um, I do think you have a little bit more latitude in that environment, and maybe you're talking about institutional investors and, and allocators mm -hmm. that that are kind of willing to look at the performance of hedge funds in aggregate or over longer time periods. Um, I think we were probably allowing the active ETF to be a little bit more volatile across those different lenses. You know, the long book exposures, um, the concentration of some of our long positions, the idiosyncratic risk within the long book in particular. You know, trying to generate alpha, as we always do with the short book, finding individual securities that we thought would offer us not just relative returns, but absolute returns, and then moving the net exposure around during a very volatile period, right? I mean, we've, we've kind of, we're coming out of that that COVID pandemic period, very low interest rates, a lot of stimulus. The learning was, even when we had good periods, what I would characterize as kind of within the peer group, kind of, you know, performing in the top decile or, or having strong periods of performance, um, if we juxtapose that with periods that were kind of the other end of the spectrum, you know, just too volatile, the drawdowns would be kind of too extreme. I would say over a long enough time horizon, we may be willing to absorb that as as asset managers and, and portfolio managers. But the realization in our conversations with clients and financial advisors was, you know, the active ETF structure and alternative strategy, um, the preference would be to have a little bit more of a, um, you know, kind of a lower volatility type of a strategy. So letting the long book at times look a little bit more like the broader market, you know, instead of instead of seeking at every turn to look, you know, very different, have very low correlation, um, trying to strike a balance between saying, look, we do want to have high active share and the nature of our process is to have high active share. We do want to be able to provide lower correlation and returns. Um, but the recognition that if you're too different from the pack at any given point in time, maybe it's over a quarter or a year, um, you know, it starts to be too difficult for, for a financial advisor or a client to, to kind of embrace and endure and manage that volatility over cycles. So again, having using that as a, as a learning opportunity, when we integrated the ETFs into Cloud Capital, re-engaging with the broader team, bringing some of those capabilities and perspectives that we have in the capital markets, um, I would say we kind of tried to, to revamp or retool the strategy um, to be a little less volatile on a on kind of a day-to-day -day basis. And and the results of that effort so far have been, you know, really promising, right? So kind of that willingness to say, we're not going to have, you know, super high active share with the long book and the short book and move the net around. Let's play it more into that alternative equity mindset, the alternative, um, you know, being kind of a risk adjusted return. We do want to generate positive alpha and returns over cycles. We do want to do that with less volatility. Um, but if we're too extreme in our willingness to take idiosyncratic bets within the portfolio, that's not the 
didn't didn't feel like the best fit for an active ETF structure. So that was one of the learnings that we um, that we took to heart. Yeah, and and um, you can see um, in the the fund performance, you kind of like when that moment happened and how the changes affected the overall returns. 